After crossing Lake Ontario, we stayed the night in Trenton before making our way east to Kingston. We had no idea the area off the coast of Kingston was going to be this rough. High winds tossed us around brutally on our approach into Kingston. We've got about 35% fuel left. I've never done this trip before. Mathematically, we should make it. And we did make it to the mouth of the Cataraqui River, but not in time to pass through the causeway bridge to the marina we would be staying at, located just on the other side. We made it to the St. Lawrence River, and as soon as we hit the river just south of Kingston, freaking water kicked up and it got really, really choppy and uh, just, just really nasty. Joan, damage report? Uh lick our wounds and explore the city of Kingston, Ontario in this video, our season finale of Cruising Joan Lynn. just south of Kingston. Freaking water kicked up and it got really, really choppy and uh, just just really nasty. Uh, we finally made it into the uh, Cataraco River here. And uh, unfortunately, just our luck, we got here just after one o'clock. The LaSalle Causeway opens um, once every hour on the hour and we didn't make the one o'clock. Joan, damage report? Uh, it's not really damage, it's just water. Now I gotta sit here and drift in, in the river for the next 50 minutes. Joan goes down below in the cabin and uh, she finds that the cooler tipped over. Is the carpet wet? Oh, there's a little bit of ice there. Most of it was all back in that corner. Ugh, shit. Our floor is nice and clean. Yeah, that's a good point. The floor needed to be cleaned anyway, so I guess that's a good thing. Joan told me too that the uh, toilet paper roll or toilet paper dispenser fell off, so I'm gonna go and take a look and see if I can fix that. Ah, oh, this carpet's soaked. The Kingston Marina is an older marina with some seasonal and transient dockage available. 
However, it is primarily a shipbuilding facility that constructs both commercial and military vessels. The staff are friendly and helpful and we like to stay here rather than the more popular Confederation Basin because it is much more quiet and less populated. We crept the boat over to our assigned slip after refueling and took a walk through the bustling city. We made it to the Kingston Marina. Uh, the winds kicked up something fierce and it was extremely difficult to get in, but we did get in without a problem. And uh, now we're walking into town. That night we took a ghost tour in Kingston, but we were unable to bring our cameras with us. Kingston, one of Canada's oldest cities, is said to be one of Canada's most haunted. Last night we were on a ghost tour and one of the stops was this little courtyard that's in a tunnel system. It's like a secret passageway in Kingston. An old limestone carriageway that is now used by pedestrians to cut through the town is said to be haunted by the ghost of Teresa Ignis Beam. Beam was murdered in the carriageway in 1868 by her lover and nephew, John Napier, after she revealed to him in the carriageway that she was pregnant with their child. Napier, a successful, high-profile businessman, became angrily threatened by the thought of an affair with his aunt becoming exposed and strangled Beam to death in the carriageway. It is said that Napier and a few of his trusted men buried Beam's body somewhere along the carriageway. To this day, Beam's remains have not been discovered and she remains one of Kingston's most active ghosts, appearing to pedestrians pleading with them to help her find her bones. So then one of the stops was down here. The girl went down here and was telling a story about a woman named Teresa who is buried somewhere here. So they've never ever found her bones to this day, but they say that every so often she will come through this courtyard and come up to people and ask where her bones are. Fort Henry is located on the opposite side of the Cataraqui River. It was built at the start of the War of 1812 and later expanded upon between 1832 and 1836. Ladies and gentlemen, under the command of Sergeant Vandevin, the artillery detachment of the Fort Henry Guard. Fort Henry was named after Henry Hamilton, former Lieutenant Governor of the Province of Quebec. The fort was used by the British occupation to defend against American Navy warships during and after the War of 1812. Since 1938, Fort Henry has been an attraction operated by Parks Canada. The attraction offers self and guided tours. The four families at a time would sleep and live in this room. Historical reenactments and demonstrations displaying hundreds of artifacts, shopping, and dining facilities. It is also said to be haunted. It is Monday, August 5th, and we are at the Kingston Marina, slowly getting ready to uh, depart and head back to the United States, head back to Rochester. And uh, Canada is a great place to visit, very border friendly, highly recommend visiting uh, 
the cities and marinas on the Canadian coast if you are boating on the uh, Lake Ontario or St. Lawrence River. But one thing, one suggestion I have for Canada is please, for the love of God, don't overcook your french fries. Like everywhere we go, it's just the french fries are just over fried and brown and practically, and in some cases, actually burnt. Other than that, thank you Canada. We'll be back. Preparing to leave and Jim is going to do a quick engine check make sure everything looks good before we take off across the lake to Rochester. So we're running a little low on engine oil. I'm glad I checked and I'm going to be adding some. the engine was two quarts low so I added two quarts and we're back up to normal and uh, so that was good that we checked wouldn't want an engine warning light to go on in the middle of Lake Ontario and have to open this thing up there and something about these Volvo Pentas uh, they drink oil like crazy so that's what I've heard that's what I've read that's what our mechanic tells us so it is a good idea to keep an eye on that check it every now and then We made our way out to Lake Ontario on yet another windy day. The northeast end of the lake was kicking up four to six foot waves, some of which were coming up over the bow. While we were toughing out a patch of high waves north of the Duck Islands, one of our bow lines came loose and was dragging in the water. So Jim grabbed a life jacket and used a dock pole to reach out and bring it in while I kept the bow pointed into the waves. Needless to say, Jim got a little wet. None of this was caught on camera. It was too dangerous to man cameras, and to be honest, cameras were the furthest thing from our minds while a line was in the water while the props were turning. We are heading uh, through a bad patch of water on Lake Ontario. Uh, and I've seen four or five footers out here. And uh, it's going to be a little bit before we pass this up and uh, change course south. Hopefully, end up in a little bit calmer waters. And we did make it to calmer waters, but we decided to make a stop along the way. Lake Ontario, but we decided because we um, expended so much fuel pushing water for a couple hours that uh, oh, we had a choice. We could either come into Rochester on fumes or go out of our way a little bit and fuel up. So we decided to play it safe, and we are now just entering the uh, Fairhaven Harbor, and we're going to stop to the marina here and fuel up. And uh, it's better to come in on too much fuel than uh, on fumes. But uh, we're looking forward to a pretty decent ride the rest of the way. We've got about two hours to go, and um, the lake is almost flat calm now. So we paid the price, but now we can make up for our time. After refueling, we headed west to Rochester under partly cloudy skies and a flat calm lake. And this is our last video of the season, right? Yes, it is, but we will be back in October with another set of videos that will begin filming in the spring. And that's just about six weeks away. Oh, and that reminds me, thanks to everyone for watching, subscribing, and to all those who've left us comments and conversation. Yep, stay subscribed and follow us on Facebook too. Uh, I think that was my line. Uh, your name isn't Joan, is it? Look at the script. Well, if you'd move over a little and give me some room. You've got plenty of room. No, look, this is the center right here. No, this is the center. Uh, great, now we have to do this all over again. Well, in the end, my CJL, friend, we'll take two. More like take 75. Hey, we're going to do it
in a valley with sand, I just live in a can, in a while we'll smile, march on another mile.